Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us for our weekly online worship service along with the folks of Craig's Bank Parish Church based in Edinburgh. I would like to remind you of the good work that the folks at Christian Aid are doing all across the globe, especially during this trying time of the corona pandemic. Uh, please have a look at their website to find out a little bit more about what they are doing and do consider making a donation towards their worthy projects. As we are gathered here today, I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ with grace, mercy and peace. Shall we answer the greeting of the Lord by singing our first hymn together? Today's reading is from John chapter 14 verses 15 to 21. If you love me, you will obey what I command, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counsellor to be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realise that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. Would you like to know a secret? It's a secret about God. No, seriously, it's an open secret, but it's as if it's not so well known. It is also not meant for everyone's ears. I could tell everyone, but odds are they might not be interested. Or they might just not get it. They might not understand it. Some folks could say it's a bit of shop talk. You know, like when petrol heads talk to one another about car engines and get all excited about the difference in power output between a normally aspirated engine and one with a turbo or even a double turbo. I, I know, it sounds like a top gear talk. What would you say, Jeremy? Shop talk may be for an initiated in-group or so it might feel. So I want to tell you a secret, although it's an open one. And it isn't meant for everyone's ears and some will not grasp what it is about. 
and it is only for those who are really interested. But before I go there, before I share this open secret for the interested, I want to ask you something first. During this time of Corona confinement with all its frustratingly confusing relational tensions, maybe too close to your housemates, maybe too far removed from your friends and your family. During this time of confinement stress, do you sometimes feel lonely or misunderstood or that no one, not even your housemates, get you? That you wish you had someone with whom you could talk to that would get you, that would understand who you are and what you are really about? Someone who would not judge you, but who would actually understand your dreams and your fears. Someone to comfort you in a way that no one you know really can. Because, as you might know, it is indeed possible to be alone despite being surrounded by people. Okay, maybe not all extroverts would get that, but most introverts would. Knowing how lonely you can be whilst not being alone. Could you do with a comforting presence someone to put your heart at ease and your mind to rest? Wouldn't that be wonderful? A friend who knows you like no other. A soulmate to share in your greatest adventures and to support you amidst your greatest insecurities. But then again, you know you can also be rather silly. With all your insecurities and issues and chips on your shoulder, those demons or ghosts of yesterday that seem to chase you down the wrong alleys, the failures or offhand dismissals by others that feed your insecurities, the companion on your life's journey that have stabbed you in the back maybe. The ones who hurt you to the point of now making you distrustful or even hateful. All those inner struggles you have that seem to cloud your judgment that make you do stupid things or feed stupid thoughts. No, this is not me judging you. This is me understanding what you might be facing. Understanding from experience. So if that is the case, then do you really want to pal a friend, a comforter, who will effectively be your soulmate, soulmate to the point of just nodding approval to all your dreams and fears? Do you want a soulmate who puts his or her arms around your shoulder saying, aye, that's true. It's just like you say, nodding affirmingly to every dream and desire and fear you might have. It rather sounds like a good drinking buddy, but not necessarily a good friend. Not really. A good friend would be with you, be there for you, yes, be there with you, yes. Be understanding, be supportive, be encouraging. But a good friend will also know what is good for you. A good friend would cut out and cut through the lies that you tell yourself. A good friend will also have a good advice for you. Will be honest and tell you not only what you want to hear, but also what you need to hear. A soulmate will cry and laugh with you, but will also warn you and when necessary guide you or even give you a good old slap in the face just to open your eyes, to wake you up, to smell the coffee that is your real life. Otherwise, this friend of yours is Nothing but an echo chamber for your own whims and fancies and issues. After all, 
you would want a confidant that you can have confidence in. A soulmate that has her or her or his own soul and personality. And other. Another person, in other words, not just a mirror image of yourself. And that is the secret I want to share with you. The secret of the promise that you can have the most amazing, most adventurous, most brave, most gentle, most innovatively creative, stupendously inspiring friend who will be with you. Journeying with you through the ups and downs of your life. A friend who will not judge you, but who will also not leave you to wallow in your own limited understanding of reality. A friend who will support you in a way that makes your life more meaningful. Not necessarily more pleasant. The scripture that Jackie read to us from John chapter 14 shows Jesus talking to his friends before he leaves them behind. He tells them this. You can have me as your closest best friend. Well, actually, it will be my spirit. I know it sounds weird. But that's what Jesus promises. He promises he's guiding nurturing, challenging, engaging, comforting presence. How wonderful that would be. I can testify from personal experience that the Spirit of God has guided and challenged me, reprimanded me and restored me. No, I'm not perfect. I know that. Far from it. But I am not alone. I am not lonely. By the grace of God, through the very presence of the Spirit of Jesus in me, I have been enabled to be more than my insecurities, to grow beyond the limitations that the accuser would want to restrict me to. Most importantly, the Spirit of God has not only guided and strengthened me, but has put my heart and my mind at rest. I am reminded that I am loved. I am forgiven. And I am also able to love. Contrary to what the world or I myself would allow me to believe from time to time. Remember, I said not everyone will get it. That's what Jesus says. He states that the world cannot accept the Spirit of God. Sorry. Sorry for the world. Sorry for God. Sorry for Jesus. Sorry to the point that Jesus weeps when he enters Jerusalem as a liberator for the very crowd who will shortly kill him. The crowd who does not get him for who he is. Sorry, to the point that Jesus asks God's forgiveness when the crowds crucify him. Because the world cannot grasp the sacrificial spirit of God. So the secret is that you can have the spirit of God in your very innermost as your supportive challenging, guiding soulmate. But then you must open your soul to that very Spirit of God, not merely to a figment of your imagination. Because how you strike up a friendship with the Spirit of God is the trick. That is the challenge, the key to unlocking the magic. So how do you experience God's Spirit. Is it a feeling? A wish? A magical abracadabra spell? Do you do a secret, secret weird ritual? How do you engage this Deus Ex Machina to become the Deus in your own 
Meshina. Look at the very first verse and the very last verse in this section that Jackie read to us. If you keep my commands, read it for yourself. Jesus tells his friends, I and my father will know you are our soulmate as you do what I told you to do. You know those teachings. Those teachings are the bits where Jesus says, love compassionately, care recklessly for the needy, be someone of integrity, of humility, acknowledge that God rules and not you, that all life matters, that life is to be celebrated and not just worried about. That stuff, those commands. If we keep those commands, Jesus promises his friendship to those whom he knows loves him. And how does he know you or I love him? By your or my following his commands. Now that is what I want of a friend. Someone whom I can look up to, whom I know will not be looking down on me. Someone who invites me into a partnership with him. He trusts me to be able to be a good friend of his. Yes, I will fail, but he won't. He gives me the opportunity to experience his camaraderie, his challenging and comforting presence exactly as I follow in his footsteps. Around here we have a lovely public walkway running from village to village and town to town through the most beautiful rural and urban areas. It is called the John Muir Way, after the great naturalist, ecologist and conservationist John Muir. I love walking bits of the John Muir Way here uh, out in the Scottish outdoors. Now imagine if John Muir himself was walking with me, opening my eyes to the glories of the nature around me, sharing his insights with me as a friend. It would probably be like having a fit Sir David Attenborough as my personal guide. And here we have badger tracks heading on towards that tree stump. Come, let's have a look. Yes, there you can see the bees trying to restore the damage that the old badger did when she helped herself to much of their honey. Now imagine the Jesus Christ way. You can walk the Jesus way there where you find yourself with Jesus guiding you. Taking you where you will be able to do things that he did and more. Partnering with you on your journey. A friend for life. That's the secret. Amen. Let us pray together. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the family of faith. United in our desire to follow Jesus. Thank you for those with whom we have laughed, who have made this world a more cheery place. Thank you for those with whom we have wept and we have shared our sorrows with in our times of need. Father, please bless those in government, in hospitals and in care homes who face extra challenges in these days those who are bowed down under the burdens they must carry. Please give them extra strength, grace and wisdom. We pray for those who are crushed by their responsibilities and those who feel the pain of our world, in particular charities like Christian Aid. Help them to keep on going. Please bring supportive friends alongside them. Give them tokens of your grace, fresh vision and courage and signs of encouragement in their struggle. 
God our Father, bless those who are lonely, those who have grown old and whom the passing years have taken their friends and contemporaries. We bring the lonely and their loneliness to you, O God, you who delight to put the solitary into families. We pray for strangers in a foreign land, for asylum seekers and refugees, separated by language and culture from familiar ways and much-loved customs. We remember all those who even in the midst of crowds feel lonely. We remember those who have lost loved ones for whom they have cared, whose needs they have met, whose lives have been so intertwined that they still listen for a voice they will not hear again. Help the church family, we pray, to be a place of acceptance and belonging, a place of welcome and inclusion where all can find a home, a listening ear, a friendly smile and a helping hand. Father, send us forth this day with the joy that no one can take from us, the life which is your life and the hope that gives strength to our actions. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hello, Sunday the 10th of May is the start of Christian Aid Week. It is usually about gift aid envelopes, or door-to-door -door collections, or as last year, a Mad Hatter's Tea Party. This year is different. Christian Aid Week is moving online. The need, however, is greater than ever. The poorest communities are hit hardest by coronavirus. Now is the time to reach out to our neighbours, both near and far. Christian Aid have more than 70 years' experience of working in partnership to support communities to thrive. They tackle the root causes of poverty so that women, men and children the world over are strengthened against future events. And when disasters happen, Christian Aid get people the help they need straight away. Please donate on the Christian Aid website, caweek.org and remember to gift aid your donation if appropriate. Or just put money in an envelope and I can collect it when more normal times return. Send love and hope this Christian Aid Week to our neighbours both near and far. Take care, stay safe and consider donating to Christian Aid today. Thank you. God bless. And now as we finish up our worship time together, 
I would like to invite you to join in on our Zoom coffee blather, which we normally have on a Sunday morning at half past 11. That's 11.30 on a Sunday morning. So I don't know what time you might be viewing this service, but Sunday mornings 11.30 if you're interested in our Zoom coffee session. The details are up on our website. And also I would like to uh, tell you about the Craigie's Kids Corner program that we have, that we upload once a week onto our Facebook page. So if you have a preschool or a primary school child in the house, then it might be interesting for you, uh, especially for your child, to participate in the Craigie's Kids Corner. I leave you now with the reminder what our Lord Jesus Christ said when he said, and remember I'll be with you even until the end of the age. Amen.